Welcome back to CM Modular. Today, there's been something I've been thinking about trying for a little while, and that is to see if I can get CV control over my modular system from my DAW through virtually any audio device, no matter whether it's DC or AC coupled. So here's a scenario. You have a modular system like this, um, you have a DAW like this, I'm using Cubase, and you want them to communicate. The first thing people usually reach for is something like this. This is a MIDI to CV converter. This one's quite a workhorse actually, Kenton Pro Solo. I've had it about 20 years. It's been gigged a lot and it still does the job. But what if you just don't have something like this at all and you want to automate something? What we're going to try to do today is a cheap and cheerful way really to um, automate some parts of your modular using an AC coupled audio interface. So what is AC coupling? Well, most audio devices have a capacitor, which is essentially acting as a high pass filter at at least one or probably various points in the signal chain. A capacitor will allow certain frequencies through depending on the value and the resistance of the circuit, anything below a certain frequency is going to be filtered out, including any DC element, because it's normally not a good, useful thing to have in your audio. But we want it today. So what we're going to do, I suppose we're going to borrow a technique from, from radio, which is amplitude modulation. So we're going to take a higher frequency signal at a steady level, and that's going to be our carrier and we're going to modulate the volume of that and that the shape that we modulate the volume is going to represent the cv shape that we want to use as our envelope our controlling cv within our synthesizer so here's what i've got to kick off with um i've got my vco 3340 here and it's just going through well it's attenuated a little bit and it's just going through our low pass filter here I've modulated the pulse width with a triangle wave here just to get a nice, rich, fruity sound. And uh, yeah, it's going through the filter. If I move the filter, it sounds squidgy. I like that. I want to automate that part, the filter cut off. So in Cubase, I've got this chopped up noisier beat here. Um, and I wanted to make my bass line to go with it. And that's what we're going to use the modular for. I have an audio channel. What we need is just a high audio frequency waveform. Um, so you could use a sample. You could put that directly in the audio of your DAW. But I've already started with this, which is to use this plugin, which is a test generator. And that will generate just any waveform. I'm going to use a square wave. We'll leave it at about minus 9 dB. And we'll put the frequency up at uh, 20K. So that's our carrier wave. What I'm going to do now is we're going to modulate the volume of that. So we just use the automation in Cubase. I think most or all DAWs are going to have some way of doing this. Um, but if I select the volume here, I can now start drawing in my volume pattern. Or this will actually translate to being the filter pattern. So I'll draw it in like this. So there we have it. We have our solid frequency with the volume being changed in the shape that we want it corresponding to the CV that we want. So really this is two parts. So we've essentially done part one, which is um, creating a, a carrier signal. We've essentially kind of chopped up the DC signal into lots of little bits to send out of the audio interface and now part two is kind of decoding that or putting those pieces back together um, and you can do that with an envelope follower there are a few on the market dope for have one i think it's the a119 i haven't got an envelope follower here so i'm going to show you how to do it with separate modules I've got this routed from the sub out of my audio interface. I'm using this uh, Tascam Model 24, but as I said earlier, you can use any interface for this. As long as it has a spare output, I'm assuming you want to use the first two outputs for audio, but you may not. You may just want to use it for CV, so go ahead with a... If you just have stereo, that would give you two channels of CV. But anyway, I've got it routed from the sub out there, 
How you do your routing in your door is up to you. This is not a Cubase tutorial, but you, I'm assuming you can route it out of, your, out of the output that you want separately to anything else. And that's good. I've got it here coming into our um, 4 amp. This, so this is a new Takab module that will be out soon. Very, very simple. 4 amp. There are 1, 2, 3, 4 amplifiers or signal boosters. Um, so most external sources that you put into your modular system are likely to be just line level, like maybe 2 volts peak to peak or something around that, um, which isn't enough in the modular domain, you need to boost that. It needs to be a lot hotter. Um, so I've got a boost here, and that's gonna bring our level right up to something that's gonna be useful in the system. So I'm taking that out of there, and I'm putting it to another Takab module that's been recently released, the 3HWR, or three half wave rectifier. And there are, again, three gates here, three rectifiers. If I put a signal into the input there, I have two outputs. The top output is just the positive part of that signal and the bottom output is the negative part of that signal. So I'll show you what that looks like on a scope. And I'm actually, just to show you, I'm gonna buffer this through the Takab 4VIV, um, which is actually an inverter, but as it's cast, as it's the signal's normalized from each gate to the next, if I put it in the gate below here, I get the re-inverted signal, the, or, equivalent to the original signal out. So there's our waveform on the scope there, the volume of which is modulated roughly to the pattern that we have on the, on the DAW there. So what I can see is that there's actually a curve there. Um, I, I drew straight lines into Cubase and they've come out with this uh, exponential curve which which makes sense because it's a volume control, so Cubase has converted it to what it, it thinks we need. So I'm just going to crudely um, draw in the, the opposite curve on here, if I do that, just to compensate for that. And as you can see now, we have a slightly flatter curve. It's not the most accurate, but I think if you're looking for accuracy, this is probably not the path to take. This might not drive the pitch to VCO, but it's going to drive a filter perfectly well. So that's our shape. What we're going to do now is we're going to invert the bottom or the negative side of that waveform. I'm going to put that now into the 4VIV. So just to show you here, the two waveforms. In yellow, that's the positive one. In blue, that's the negative what we're going to do now is we're going to invert the negative one and we're going to sum those together. So we're going to put the negative part through this gate on the 4VIV and we're going to put them both into the mix here. As you can see now they're summed. There's a bit of sort of DC, DC energy in there already, but it's still an AC waveform. You can see it going up and down. Yeah, yeah. the, the square waves haven't interlocked in like Lego or anything. We're still going to have to put a good filter on there to get, it, get a smooth CV. I'm using the 4LP. So there, so there we go. There's our CV. We've filtered it down. It's perhaps a little bit rough, but I think that'll be okay to drive our low-pass filter. You could use other things to filter this. Some VCFs might work. Depends whether they're AC coupled or not. You might be able to use the SAR. In fact, I'll try that later. So the SAR is our lag generator, which again is just a, a very low, low pass filter. So there's our waveform. Let's modulate the cutoff of this filter now and see what it sounds like. I just wanted to try something else now, which is to see if we can drive a VCO in a, in a musical uh, tuned kind of way. So I've got another output that's the same. It's got another test generator on it. I'm gonna route that out of the other sub out from the audio interface. And we're gonna do that. We're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna halfway rectify it. Actually, we're short of a mixer, so I'll tell you what we're going to do. 
we're just going to take half of it. It doesn't have to be particularly sharp in terms of the transients on this one. So we'll just take the positive half from the halfway rectifier. And then we're going to filter that. Let's try putting it through the SAR slew limiter. And then, yeah, this is not a, a musically complex uh, bass line by any means. So we only really need to get about two or three notes to make something happen. Let's see if I can tune it with this trusty guitar tuner here. Let's get a couple of notes that sound good together. Yeah. Apologies, I'm not recording the output of the oscillator at this part, but what I'm doing is I'm just outputting the triangle wave to my guitar tuner and I'm just holding it on one bar and changing the volume of the carrier for that bar, trying to get it on note. Right, let's see what this sounds like. So there we have it. CV control over various parameters in your modular system using any DAW and any audio interface. <laughs>